Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is an introduction to SAS lesson. This is the third lesson in a series of seven lessons on SAS. So if you haven't checked out the first two videos, what is SAS and reading data, definitely recommend that you check it out uh, so that you can follow along, make sure that you're caught up. And you're, we're going to be leveraging the knowledge that we learned in the previous lessons and in this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about creating new variables, which is basically creating new columns for a number of different purposes. It's super useful, and you're going to see how easy it is once you follow along in this lesson. So let's get started. So you'll see here, I have SAS 9.4 open, and we're going to be using the SAS help dot cars data file right here. And and this comes already default within SAS, so we don't need to read any data. We're just going to be reading the SAS data set that already exists. So let's get started. So let's start with the data step. And then here we're going to find our new data. We're basically going to copy the SAS help.cars into this new data SAS data set called cars, which is going to be in the work library, which is the temporary library. So here I'm going to go set sas help dot cars and then i'm going to click on run pretty simple straightforward program we're going to go up to the work library and we're going to see the data set here perfect so first thing i want to do is i want to determine what the profit is on on these particular vehicles so msrp minus invoice so pretty straightforward let's go ahead and get started profit is equal to msrp minus invoice simple as that and we go check it out and you'll see here now you have the profit that looks great uh, the next thing we want to do is I want to know I want to basically put classifications on these vehicles so if the vehicle is above $30,000 MSRP then I want it to have a class that says luxury so we're, what we're going to be doing that, how we're going to do that is we're going to do the if then statement. So here we're going to say if, what's our condition, MSRP is greater than 30,000, then perform a certain function in this case, or assign a certain variable. In this case, I'm going to have a new variable called class, and I'm going to call it luxury here. And then I'm just going to close it off with a semicolon, and I'm going to run this. So what do you think happens if class does not, uh, if, if, MSRP is less than or equal to 30,000. What do you think class is going to be? Take a visit, pause the video, take a guess, and I'm going to open it up here. And you'll see here, luxury is sometimes blank. So the, for example, the second row is blank because the MSRP is less than $30,000. So that's good. That's interesting. What happens if I want it to uh, be the case where if it's less than or equal to 30,000, I want it to be called not uh, not luxury. So a couple ways you can do that. One way you can do it is do the else statement and say else else class is equal to not luxury and then it'll treat this as mutually exclusive. So once it hits this condition it won't go to this other condition. And I forgot to put quotes here. You'll see that SAS is nicely color coded so you can easily tell how it's done. Perfect. So you can do it that way. What you'll notice here, though, is that it actually gets cut off because what's what it's doing, it's taking the length from up here and applying it to here. So it's cutting it off. A couple ways you can fix that. Obviously, you can put some additional spaces here to increase the length. So I'm going to kind of cheat because this one we don't really teach you until I blink lesson six when we do basic formatting. But I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little bit here we're going to use this fun we're going to we're going to find the length of class and we're going to say dollar sign which means that it's a it's like a character and then we're going to say 10 dot so you don't have to you can just copy the code for now you don't need to know exactly what it does because we're going to be covering it in future lessons so if you take a look here now you'll see here now it says not luxury perfect Another way you could do it is you could also do else if, which again is a mutually exclusive. But then obviously I have to then put a condition here. So I could say MSRP is less than or equal to 30,000, then do this. 
So that's another way. I'm just going to sh quick show you quickly that that works. Obviously, they compile it at different times and use different amount of resources, but we can talk about that in the more advanced one. When you're first starting out, you just want to know how exactly to code something. So one last option is do non-mutually exclusive if then if then statements. The problem here is that if, for example, it meets this condition and this condition, which it can be in some cases, uh, then, especially if you have more than one level, then you just got to be careful to make sure that that's not the case. But let's leave it like this for now. But either, either of those three options work. So if, if then, if, else if uh, it works, if then else works, and then if then, if then works as well. So that's, that's good. Uh, so what happens if I wanted to say not only is the class is equal to luxury, but the price is also equal to high, just as an example. So if I, and there's a number of ways you can think about this. So when you might try price is equal to high, and then when you try to run that, it's actually not going to work. So it'll tell you here that it actually didn't work. It's still right here. So it tried to proceed, but it couldn't because that's not how it functions. So for whatever reason, SAS makes you do the, what I call the do and loop. So what we're going to do here is how you treat this is you go, you write your state, your if then statement as you normally would, and then you go do, and then you define each of your statements. So in this case, price is equal to I, close off the semicolon, and then you denote the end of it with this then, uh, n, sorry. And you run it, and now you can see up here it ran successfully. And you'll check over here. Now you have price is equal to high. Obviously, then you can do the same thing with the else, else if statement. But I'm gonna leave it like that, just so you're. But you know, uh, maybe the question here is maybe you want to combine the make and the model, right? Sometimes you say like, you know, BMW, three series. Uh, to be honest, I'm not, I don't know cars that well, so maybe brutalizing this but anyway so you might want to combine these two these two variables together to concatenate one string so the way you do that there's a number of different what they call it cat options uh, not like the animal but within us so the way you, you you want to do this here is we're gonna call this unique car just for whatever reason and we're gonna use this cat X function. There's a whole bunch of different ones we're gonna cover in future lessons, but cat X is the one I use. So the way cat X works is that first it asks you what's your delimiter between the different variables. So in this case, I'm just gonna put a space or I'm gonna put a vertical bar in quotations. And then here I'm gonna list off the, the two vehicles. I'm gonna go the two strings that I wanna combine. So I believe it's make slash model Oh, no, so yeah, make slash, yeah, make slash model, perfect. And then I'm gonna close that off. And then we're gonna run it. And you'll take a look here at the very end. You'll see here uh, the make slash model. Okay, that's good, that's that's useful. Uh, what happens if I have, for example, I'm just gonna throw another one out there. I, I wanna know whether or not any taxes were applied because then that's gonna eat away against my, my profit, right? So, say hypothetically, if it's in Europe, there is no taxes, or if it's if it's in Europe, there's ten percent tax on the MSRP. Otherwise, there's no taxes. So you might say, "Well, King, that sounds pretty easy." Okay, well let's try it. So if we go, uh, we're gonna use the function called upcase, just so I don't have to worry about syntax. So what upcase does basically makes everything uppercase. So here, because it is case sensitive when it pulls these conditions. So in this case, I'm going to say Europe. Then I'm going to say taxes is equal to MSRP times 0 0.1, which will give me the 10% tax. Okay, sounds pretty easy. So if we take a look here, what you'll see here is now you have these tax values for all the Europe ones. But the problem here is that you have all these dots, which denotes, so when it's a character, uh, when it's a null value, which means there's no values there, it's a blank, like you saw in price. If it's a numeric or a date format, which is actually a numeric as well, uh, you'll see here it provides a dot. And you might say like, okay, that's not really that big a deal. 
Like, why do, why do I care about that? So, well, you will, you will, because if we go profit final and we go uh, profit minus taxes and we treat that, what's end up going to happen, I'm sure some of you can guess, is that now your profit final right here is also a little bit messed up even though there's no taxes here so how do we deal with that issue obviously we could also put an l statement and say taxes equals zero as opposed to putting a null value but another way to deal with it rather than just doing the straight multiplication which is actually kind of like um kind of like this in reality right like just minus the taxes or oh sorry I gotta put the brackets in because it does it in the order that it sees in with that the brackets okay no no okay the profits actually negative for these ones because the taxes are so high okay perfect um okay that makes sense so the way another way for us to treat it instead of doing it this way we can use a sum function so sum's going to ask us for these different variables so here so i'm going to treat it like that and then we're going to run it check the log looks like it ran successfully 428 observations with 21 variables and you'll see here now the observation ran correctly so that's really important uh, so definitely, I, I highly recommend that you use the sum function. It, it, there may be some efficiency in processing time, but it, it's a really great way of dealing with these null values. So basically, it'll ignore the null value, which assigns the value of zero. That may or may not be appropriate, depending on what your situation is or understanding your data. Uh, but that's just a way of how to deal with it. So that's incorporating pretty simple using if then statements, using the concatenate by using the catx function and how to assign normal variables. And as well, I gave a little sneak peek on the SAS formatting. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.